Hi and welcome to my latest LEGO Technic creation. In this video I'll be demonstrating uh, this experimental car chassis that I've created. Uh, what's unique about this particular design is this car can go forward quickly but it reverses slowly just like in a real car. And later in the video I'll explain how the gearing for that works in order to achieve this uh, particular uh, outcome. And also I'll tell you about a surprising uh, flaw that I found in the design uh, that I didn't realise until I built the actual model and I'll tell you how I got around that problem. Uh, Alright, so I'll just demonstrate some of the features of this chassis. It's obviously a remote controlled car. At the front here we've got the uh, steering mechanism, so it's just a medium sized motor driving this gearing here which drives the worm gear, which goes through that gear and drives the uh, front steering mechanism. So I'll just demonstrate that with the remote control. We can turn left and right like that. At the back we have got the main motor that drives the rear axle. So that's a, a large motor here. Uh, that large motor drives through this 2 to 1 gearing uh, through the differentials at the bottom. Uh, at the back there at the main wheels are driven by a differential and this is the gearing that generates that difference between going forward and reverse in terms of the speeds. So I'll just demonstrate that. So if we drive forwards, we can see that the back wheel goes at a certain speed like that. And if we drive backwards, it goes a lot slower. So it's a one to five difference between going forwards and going backwards. So I'll now explain the gearing mechanism used to make this car go forward uh, one speed and in reverse at a slower speed. And central to that is this configuration of two differentials like this. What I've got here is that this differential is being driven by an input. Over here we've got the output and then we've got two paths that can transfer the power between input and output. On the left here we've got a 1 to 1 gearing ratio. And on the right we've got a 1 to 5. And typically what happens is that as you turn the input, the output will rotate. And you'll find that both paths are being used. But what I can do, for example, I can hold this path here still. And then it just uses the left path, which gives us a one-to-one -one output. If I hold um, the left path still, then rotating the input means that the output only uses the right path. And we get an overall output gearing ratio of one to five. And that kind of led to this idea. I thought, well, if I can somehow, in, when we're going forwards, just use that path and in reverse use this path, uh, then I can get two different speeds. So the answer to this particular problem turns out to be a ratchet mechanism. And what a ratchet mechanism is, is a mechanism that only allows another gear to rotate in one particular direction. So what we've got is this small gear here. That gear is fixed through that red axle, it, it can't actually turn and that is connected to the second gear and as we rotate in one direction it kind of skips and allows rotation for example in this case in the clockwise direction but if I try turning in reverse it, it can't and gets stuck so that second gear kind of locks onto that first gear and prevents it rotating counterclockwise so we can just turn towards the right and that's exactly what I've done in this gearing mechanism. So I've added uh, the two uh, ratchet gears, one on this side and one on that side. And what that means is that um, this side can only turn in one direction and this side can only turn in the other direction. So what that means is as we turn forwards, it uses uh, the left side and this side is locked by that ratchet mechanism. And we're now getting a one-to-one -one gearing between input and output. As we go in reverse, we have the opposite happen, and now locks this side, and the output uses the right side of the gearing mechanism, and we're getting a one to five gearing. So forwards, it's one to one. Reverse, it's one to five. And this was exactly the solution I needed to be able to create the uh, chassis there in the background that can go fast forward and slow reverse. Right, just to demonstrate the car in action. So we've got the steering, left and right. We've got forward, which is fast, and then reverse is slow. So we've got a 1 to 5 in reverse. And a normal forward. Reverse, 1 to 5. Full speed forwards. Okay, so what was the fatal flaw I was talking about in the beginning of the video of this particular design, uh, which I only discovered after I actually built the car. When I first tried this prototype, it seemed to work perfectly. We go forward like that, 
reverse like that it was fantastic but what I actually found when I built the car uh, it went forward fine uh, but it didn't actually go in reverse and as it turns out if you actually hold the output uh, then going forward you know you're getting full power that locks up we can't actually go forward uh, or we can't turn the input when we're locking the output but when, when, when we lock the output in reverse there's actually another path through the gearing me mechanism that allows it to kind of go backwards and it doesn't take a lot of force on the output to stop it from going in reverse if there's no you know if I'm not holding it then it goes in reverse quite easily it turns like that but as soon as I put a bit of force on the output then reverse it ends up driving those gears I mean it's quite hard at the input to drive like that uh, so obviously um, this was disappointing um, when I did build the car it didn't uh, go in reverse very well and I did find a solution it was a bit of a hack what I ended up doing is replacing this particular gear here with a uh, friction gear or a friction pin and what that did it kind of created enough friction in that reverse path um, for this to still have a fair bit of reverse power um, without it slipping onto that reverse gear so now it's actually quite hard to hold that reverse gear it's almost you know it's gonna it, it's got a lot of force on the output so obviously not an ideal solution but it does work in practice um, it's not ideal in theory because you're introducing artificial friction which in the forward motion uh, does obviously uh, create a lot of power loss so not ideal but I did find that it was better than nothing alright thanks for watching I hope you got something out of this video and if you would like to support this channel please like and subscribe we'll see you next time bye